Hey everyone, it's Daryl from Houseplant Journal, and today I want to talk to you about this pothos up here. Now every day I take the pothos from the top of the shelf and bring him down over there. And while it might seem like a funny thing to do, like isn't it all just bright indirect light, I wanted to take this opportunity to sort of explain to you why the term bright indirect light doesn't actually help you understand the dynamics of light. When you hear the term bright indirect light, your mind just fixates on this word indirect and you think that it means you just avoid the sun. The problem with this is then you think any place the sun doesn't shine, it would be considered bright indirect light. But listen closely to this guideline. Put your plant where it has the widest possible view of the sky and then think about whether the sun shines on it or not. You see, in order to understand light, you can't just think about sun or no sun. You also have to consider the visible angle of the sky from the specific place where the plant is sitting. And so now you understand that on top of the shelf, the view of the sky is just this tiny little piece up here. But when I put it over there by the ground, now the sky is all above it. But exactly how different could the light possibly be from up there versus down near the floor. Like, what percentage difference would it need to be in order to justify the effort of having to take it and move it around each day? Would it need to be 50% more? 100% more? Like double the amount? Well, why don't we get a light meter and actually find out? So here I've got my trusty light meter. Uh, I'm going to turn it on. Now by default it goes to Lux, but I like to use foot candles, so we're going to press this button to change it to foot candles. And now we are in the range of only uh, 20 foot candles, I think the maximum is. So we're going to press this range button until the decimal place moves to the end. So now we're dealing in the range where the maximum will be 2,000 foot candles. And here's the sensor. You can see that even just changing the angle of the sensor will really change the light reading. So on top of this shelf we pretend like this dome represents the dome around the plant. So up here we get 14 foot candles, 15 foot candles, 16. See it's changing because outside the sun and the clouds are doing a dance and so that changes the light intensity and only a light sensor like this would be sensitive enough to pick up those changes. Anyway well, look, sun's coming out, so that's why we're coming up to a little higher. Anyway, so we're in the range of between 15 to 20 foot candles. That is barely useful for a plant. And so what are we getting down here? 189 foot candles. Wow, this pothos is much happier sitting down here. So just by moving the plant from the shelf onto the ground over here, we get a 10 times difference in light intensity. If you just use the term bright indirect light, you'll never understand why it's that different. But when you think about what my plant sees, as in what is completely surrounding your plant, and ask yourself how much of the sky is it looking at, now you'll begin to understand how this difference comes about. Now let me illustrate this with, uh, let me get something. So what I did here is I got an iPad and using the front facing camera, I put a fish eye lens on to the front facing camera. So basically what it is, is we have like a nearly 180 degree view that surrounds this camera. So let's put this iPad where the plant is sitting and you'll see the difference in view of the sky that accounts for the difference in light reading. So way up here, when we're looking at the view around this area, look look at the dome. We've got sky like just a tiny sliver over here. But if we move to closer to the ground, look what happens. Now we have like almost half of this view is all this bright sky area. And if I was to click it to try and expose for that, now let's take a closer look. 
see we got a much bigger area of visible sky from this point. Here are the two views shown side by side just for clarity. So now that we understand that there is a difference and quite a big difference, now we need to understand what does this actually mean for the plant. You see, sometimes when you read traditional plant care advice, they just list bright indirect light alongside all the other things you have to do, but you don't really understand how it all comes together. You should think of plants as a little factory that makes sugar out of carbon dioxide and water, and this factory is powered by light. So if I wanted to give you a human analogy to, to illustrate the importance of light, imagine if every foot candle of light is like a dollar that you spend on food. So let's say if I spent one week up there on that shelf, then I only get $20 to buy food for the entire week. Like how much food can you possibly buy? I think you'd probably starve. But when I'm sitting down here, close to the window, now I get $200 to buy food for the week. A plant that spends its time in an environment with less than 50 foot candles is like a human who cannot buy more than $50 worth of food for the whole week. I know it's kind of like a, a hard hitting example, but that is the reality for plants. Light is their ability to make their own food for survival. If you want to drastically improve the performance of all your indoor plants, just ask yourself from the spot where they're sitting, how much of the sky can they see? If it's just a tiny little sliver, it's probably not going to be as good as if it were whatever is wide as possible at home. And that's the reality of why people who have really nice looking plants are probably just the ones who have really big windows. Or if you want to move to the next level, you get a light meter and now you can start to understand exactly how far away you can place a plant and still achieve that sort of 200 to 400 foot candle range that is suitable for most low light plants. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you've noticed like significant improvements in your plants once you've prioritized light or when you look carefully at their surrounding environment to see how much sky they're actually looking at or if you've ever used a light meter. Uh, of course, I'll put a link to this down below. I'm Daryl from Houseplant Journal. Thanks for watching. Bye.